I know you heard so many good things about the iPhone 15 camera system, but what are the camera settings for the best results? In this video, I'm gonna walk you through those settings. And throughout the video, I'm gonna be using the iPhone 15 Pro in the 128 gig version. So grab your iPhone 15s, we got some work to do. In this video, I wanna walk you through both video and photo settings on the iPhone 15 Pro. And I thought it would be really good to go down to the city to show you what it would be like to use the phone camera in real life. Firstly, let's talk about some camera settings in the camera settings menu. And depending on the iPhone 15 version you have, you are gonna be missing settings like ProRes Log shooting for video. But hey, don't be discouraged. This video is about getting the best out of your iPhone 15. Firstly, let's go into our phone settings and scroll down to camera settings. We are greeted with video heavy settings at first, so let's go through them. My choice for video resolution and frame settings is 4K 24 frames. My HDR video is turned off. I find that the phone's HDR is a little too strong. I want a natural look. And then turn on enhanced stabilization if you want more stable shots. If you are shooting slow motion, for basic slow motion, 120 frames should cut it. And as you can see, 120 frames will give you slightly better quality. And then we have the record cinematic, which I don't ever use. And then let's go on to the formats menu. And for camera capture, I like to go with most compatible. And one thing that's critical in this menu is Pro Raw and resolution control. Take that on and Pro Default needs to be Pro Raw Max. And if you have the Apple Vision Pro, go ahead and take on spatial video. And if you do have the iPhone 15 Pro or Pro Max, go ahead and turn on Apple ProRes. And when it comes to ProRes encoding, choose Log Profile. And that is basically it when it comes to formats. And when it comes to composition, I do like to have grid and level on at all times. And for preserve settings, this is very personal. There's no right or wrong with these, but here are the settings that I have on. And then I'll go scroll down for rest of my settings. We know the camera app on iOS system is a little basic, but I do like that we have a lot of options when it comes to settings. One thing that I make sure to have on is macro control, if you want to take some macro photos, of course. All right. Now that we dialed our settings in, let's go and use the camera. This portion of the video is sponsored by Moft. Moft is a tech accessories brand that is not just a tech accessories brand. Let me explain. Moft creates tech accessories that are origami inspired. Their motivation is to create accessories that make creating easy and flexible. Today I'm showing you their snap phone case along with their snap tripod stand that allows you to capture things vertically, horizontally, and even vlog. The vlog mode is actually great because you can extend your phone a little higher to give you a wider shot. The snap tripod also has a floating mode, which can be used for macro photography or if you just want to use it to watch stuff like me. I really like Moth's minimalist approach. With these accessories being MagSafe compatible, they never get in the way. If anything, I feel like I got a little too used to these accessories that if I didn't have them, I would feel like I would be really missing something. Moth's accessories also comes in a bunch of other colors and they have a big variety when it comes to products. There will be a link for you down in the description. Go check out the products yourself. Thank you Moth for being a part of the channel. All right, we have our accessories on. Let's talk photo settings. I wanna go in detail about one photography setting that we've set. What is ProRaw Max? I mean, half of that word is marketing. The word we need to focus on is raw. What does raw mean when it comes to photos? For the iPhone's case, a raw file is a DNG file. So your photo won't be a JPEG, it'll just be a large DNG file. But a large DNG file doesn't mean the photo is a better quality photo. I mean, it technically is because the image contains a lot of data, but it doesn't mean the photo itself looks sharper. A raw photo format will just allow you to edit photos a lot deeper compared to a traditional JPEG format. So if you do like to edit photos, Pro Raw Max is the way to go. It's gonna allow you to push through the tones, adjust exposure and give you a better dynamic range. I wouldn't say this is really the best lighting for photos, so I don't know how many bangers we'll get today. When you're in the camera mode, at the top right corner, you'll see the format you're capturing in. Make sure that is RAW Max. You probably would know JPEG is. JPEG is a small image file. RAW 12 will give you a RAW image, but maximum 12 megapixels, whereas RAW Max will give you a RAW image that's 48 megapixels. And if you swipe up your screen, you'll see more camera settings on the bottom. My go to ratio is four by three, and I don't really change anything else here. 
With those all set up, let's capture some photos. Not sure about which iPhone you have, but the 3x zoom on the 15 Pro works out for me. With these type of really sunny days, I try to get in between buildings to get some shade going on. I do appreciate some natural contrast in my images. And time to time, I capture some portraits as well. And when it comes to portraits, I don't use the portrait mode, I just use the regular photo mode. With the portrait mode, I don't like the super artificial blur that it puts behind the subject. Just doing some quick edits and here are the results. If you do want to get a similar look, I'll have my photo presets in the description. Go ahead and grab them if you do like the style. And this right here is probably the best way to show how well the ProRAW Max performs. Yes, the 48 megapixel raw photos will be really bad for your phone space. But if you have any interest in editing photos, this is the way to go. Photography on the iPhone 15 is really good, but could it replace actual cameras? Not in my opinion. It's really good, it's very versatile, and to me, a camera that's with me all the time is a huge value to me. So in that regard, the iPhone 15 Pro really delivers, but it's a great tool for practicing, getting some day-in-the-life shots, and really learning the perspective of photography. But the situation for video is very different. The video on iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max specifically is something that I use daily, and especially if I'm out filming a YouTube video. The reason why video on these models are, in my opinion, out of this world is because of the ProRes log format. Let's talk about what ProRes log is, and then we'll talk about how to get the best results. ProRes log is a codec that records video in a logarithmic gamma encoding, which preserves a wider dynamic range compared to standard video formats. Take a look at it. This is a flat looking footage. There's barely any contrast or color in there. This essentially makes it easier for camera sensor to see the darkest and the lightest point of an image. This makes it a really big deal for professionals because it gives you a huge advantage when it comes to color grading and making your footage more custom to your liking. Also, if you feel like you need to use the action mode to have enhanced stabilization, feel free to, but do remember that it does crop in the image quite a bit. If you have the ProRes log on your iPhone 15 Pro, go ahead and enable it. Just a reminder, you'll need to have at least a 256 gig model of the iPhone 15 Pro or Pro Max to use the ProRes log internally. Otherwise, if you have those models, but the 128 gig models like myself, you're gonna have to use an SSD with your phone to fill. And my workaround for that when I don't have an SSD with me is just to use the Blackmagic camera app. With the Blackmagic camera app, the video settings that you've set on your phone becomes irrelevant. You need to reset some similar settings in the Blackmagic app as well. Let's compare the ProRes log video that comes out of the iPhone 15 Pro with a professional line cinema camera. This is a footage coming out of iPhone 15 Pro versus Sony FX30. iPhone 15 Pro is really impressive and that's why I can't get enough of the ProRes log format. For the last while, this phone has been the best option to have as a second camera and you know, sometimes even as the first camera. So do take your time to set up your camera settings properly to ensure that you're getting the best results out of your iPhone 15. You know, throwing a fancy color grade on your footage is cool, but it's very technical, time consuming, and honestly, those clips will eat your space. So if you don't have the Pro or Pro Max version of the iPhone 15, do not be discouraged. You can still use the regular video and capture really good clips, create content, or document your vacation. All you need to do in that case is to choose the best resolution possible. All right, you just unlocked the full potential of your iPhone 15's incredible camera system. With these optimized settings, you're set to capture every moment in stunning detail and clarity. But I have to tell you, don't worry too much about the technical stuff. Let your creativity run, go out, explore, and experiment with photography and video. With any series of the iPhone 15 as your companion, there are really no limits to what you can capture and create. I would love to know what you're gonna use these settings for. Are you a content creator? Are you just documenting stuff day to day? I'm curious to know. For my case, when I record YouTube videos, my iPhone 15 Pro acts like a second camera. I can easily match the footage with my professional camera. I do have a bit of travel plans coming up, and even with that, most of the time I will be using my iPhone 15 Pro. Sometimes bringing a camera and a lens is just not convenient. 
and when it comes to photos, it's all about being spontaneous for me. I feel like sometimes I get the best lighting when my camera is not even on me. So for those times, of course, I have my phone, so I capture some really nice photos. And with that, that is it for me today. Thank you so much for watching my iPhone 15 camera settings video. It has been a pleasure. I'll see you in the next video.